<laughs> okay, so thank you so much, Susan, for joining us here today at Dublin Comic Con in March 2023 edition. Uh, really appreciate you uh, taking the time out and so early in the morning as well for you. So there's a time difference. Really appreciate you coming in on a Saturday, no less. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it for just anybody. It's Dublin Comic Con. I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> it's the look of the Irish, you know. That's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's not that early here. It's nine nine in the morning, so it's not like. Oh, it's that's early for us. Believe me, oh. like. <laughs> 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 um, but that's enough of the stereotypes here. I already have a paddy cap on. You can't have any more. Someone hand me a Guinness and we're, we're, we've gone the full hog. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. I, well, first of all, I love the hat. I think the cap looks amazing on you. Just FYI. Uh, thank you. This is this is a new addition. And I was talking to the main organizers. They don't know whether to, it was going to make or break for me. I'm keeping it. Uh, we have one more in the audience. So, yeah, this is it. We're all living up to the St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Of course, if, if we don't do it, it's like you go to Scotland, you expect them to wear kilts. You go to Ireland, you're going to expect a paddy cap. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, and some Guinness. Ah, plenty of Guinness. We're literally, well, we're just down the river from the Guinness factory. If I hang my head out the window, we can see. <laughs> that's, how, that's how typically Irish we are right now. <laughs> love it. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, but listen, so thank you so much again. And hopefully um, we'll see you over here in a future show as well. So that's that's the plan, the hope. Um, because I think some of your, your fellow Justice Leaguers had already arrived here as well. So we have a we have a long-standing tradition. Um, so thanks again. And just to kick things off, uh, first of all, I'm a huge Justice League and Justice League Unlimited fan myself. Uh the series was phenomenal. Um, and uh, I know you worked with the great. Uh, Andrea uh, Romero, Romano, Romano, Romano uh, as well. And um, what was that experience like? Just speaking, because like anytime I'm watching any of the DVD extras and any of the DCAU material, and we also had a uh, fellow Irishman, Jason O'Mara, who did some of the newer uh, animated material uh, for the DCAU films. Um, we he walked with Andrea as well, and. I was just curious, like, like your your experience, like walking with Andrea. Is she semi retired now, or is she still active? Or? Yeah, no, she's mostly retired now. I mean, talk about a woman who deserves a rest. <laughs> um, you know, pretty much everything you watch on television um, is, was directed by her and cast by her. So it's not only that she directed the performances, is that it's also that she found the performers. You know, she, these casts, these, you know, these magical casts, um, she she created those along with Bruce Tim or whomever she's working with. But um, it was extraordinary. It's like starting at the top. You know, it's 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 having the best of the best in the very beginning of your career. And then hopefully you you try to recreate that over and over and over again. But that was magical, having her as my um, voice director and discovering Diana with her um, because she helped me. Same with Bruce. You know, I had a I had a picture. Bruce gave me a picture of Diana, so I knew what she was going to look like. And then Andrea really helped uh, me find the voice of Diana because she said very early on, the two things you have to remember always is are you have to always bring the princess quality to her and you always have to bring the warrior quality to her. And those two things have to coexist all the time. So if you lose one, it's not, it doesn't work. You, you can't lose either one. And she would always remind me, I wouldn't lose the princess all that often, but once in a while I lost the warrior and she'd be like, you know, toughen it up. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just glorious having her as, you know, my mentor, you know, she she held my hand the whole way through the series. Oh, that's nice. uh, yeah, it really is like any time, like even the Simpsons uh, in the credits, you'd see Andrea will pop up as well. Like uh, everything I've ever watched growing up on TV is like Andrea. I'm like, she, she's a genius. She, 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 she really is a genius. She is a genius. I mean, that word's thrown around quite a bit, but she truly is. And she's also, you know, she was an actor. So she she knows how to talk to actors. She knows what the process is like the fear sometimes, um, the insecurities. She, she, I can't say enough good things about her. She's phenomenal. 
And, and of course, you, you, back to you as well with your performance with Wonder Woman. Just before we can get into that, um, with regards to the character, did you have much in the way, like, were you a fan growing up or did you come to the character later after performing? Um, what was your connection with Wonder Woman before pre-Justice League? Well, I think I always thought she was fabulous um, because, you know, I grew up with Linda Carter and she was fabulous. Um, and but I wasn't in entrenched in that world. I was more I have three older sisters. So I was watching soap op American soap operas, you know, so that was my world. And so once I got the job, um, I made it my mission. Uh, to, you know, take a deep dive into the universe and try to figure, I'm still figuring it out. I got to be honest, I, I'm still figuring it out. You know, the canon, the not canon. I mean, it's, 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 it's confusing to somebody on the outside. Yep. Um, but I've had a lot of people say, you take my hand. I'm going to tell you what to read. I'm going to show you what to do. So I've tried to educate myself. But no, I, that wasn't daunting because it wasn't like I was, you know, I had grown up with Linda's picture on my wall or anything like that. And it wasn't as if Bruce said to me, we wanted you to do Linda Carter. It was like a whole new thing that we could all discover together. So it wasn't, that part wasn't intimidating. Uh, and have you ever had, you know, the, the opportunity or would you, you know, have an idea to contribute to the character beyond acting or voice acting like in terms of writing because I know they just announced Tom King as the the new actor for Wonder Woman Ongoing has DC I know J.M. DeMatteis as well has done a great uh, Justice League uh, animated uh, comic Infinity. series um, and yeah. would you have any interest in perhaps like is there a Wonder Woman story in you perhaps like a script or anything that you would like to explore wait is that someone knocking at, <laughs> at my door it, oh, it's opportunity. Hold on. Um, no one's approached me yet. I don't think people see me as that. You know, if I, I just, I'll be honest. I mean, I just keep hoping they see me as Wonder Woman over there at DC and Warner Brothers that, you know, um, I'd be blown away if I got to write something or contribute it in any way. But for now, I think I'm going to let the experts handle the writing like Tom. I mean, uh, you know, Tom and I were you know tweeting back and forth to each other once he announced it um he calls me wonder nerd um <laughs> but, you know i'm a huge fan of his i mean he's he's the best um so I, i'll just be like all the other fans <laughs> and waiting to see what he creates but i'll be excited to see what he creates because he's he's you know he's just so talented Awesome. And the, the opportunity then when it was that you were cast as Wonder Woman, how did that go about? Like, what was the, did you know you were auditioning for Wonder Woman when you yes. went into the role? Okay, so was that, was that intimidating down? You're like, okay, this is, this is Wonder Woman. Um, I, like, because I suppose then you're left wondering how, how, to, how to approach that. Did you ever consider um, like going full on Shakespeare, you know, in, <laughs> Shakespeare in the park with, with, the, with the approach? You know, I think... I think that um, <laughs> I don't even remember if the first audition we were told it was Wonder Woman, but we got we had callbacks at Warner Brothers, so we had to get into our cars and drive to our callbacks and meet Bruce Tim and meet Andrea Romano, and that was scary. And I remember my agent. I remember so vividly. He he he, he was calling me and he said, "Okay, it's it's for Wonder Woman." and just go and get it, Susan. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, sure. You sit back and, you know, have a cup of coffee and I'll just go get it. Um, I, I, I remember the audition very vividly. I don't think I went full Shakespeare, although that would have been lovely. Um, and um, I, I just think, I just think I tried to bring a certain elegance, I think, mm -hmm. to the character because of the fact that she was a princess and then I tried my best to sound like like an Amazonian princess warrior you know so I just tried to bring both those things and they gave me a few notes you know they they directed me a little bit and I did it again and and then I drove home and just thought okay I I did what I wanted to do most times actors don't have that experience you're driving home thinking oh shoot I should have done this or I should have done that you're kicking yourself. I didn't feel that when I drove away. I felt like 
I, I gave it my best and let the best woman win. You know, that that's what I figured. Oh, amazing. And uh, throughout the series, then I saw this, this is probably a typical question you've gotten maybe a million and one times, but I'm going to ask it a million and two. But <laughs> were there any particular arcs or episodes or stories that kind of stood out to you in the series that really, you know, that's uh, rates among your favorite? I know that's always a tricky question to ask any, you know, as performer, like what's your, what's your favorite and stuff? It's like a, to a parent, what's your favorite? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, there are there are a bunch that I, I always talk about because for whatever reason, they they stand out to me. They have a special place in my heart. Um, Maid of Honor um, was just, you know, a lovely thing to play because I played in a mentor, you know, like an older, more experienced woman, as opposed to when I first came on the show um, and it was literally Paradise Lost, you know, lost. Um, <laughs> but I, I loved I loved this little piggy, um, oh, yeah. uh, you know, because that, even though that doesn't feature me so much, it features an aspect of the character that I loved, which was um, she got to be like a little devil and flirty with with Batman, with Kevin Con, the great, the great Kevin Conroy. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was another aspect. Anytime I could play something a little bit different to her, and something that um, made her um, just pushed her out of the boundary a little bit. I loved doing that. And that one I got to do. Um, the Once in Future Thing written by Dwayne McDuffie. That I got to have a little bit more humor, you know, which I loved. You know, any like I said, anytime I got to be flirty, humorous, um, angry, you know, well, I got to do that a lot. But, you know, <laughs> it was just fun to do another aspect of her. So. This little piggy, especially the singing part, which obviously I'm not in, but Kevin, we always, we had a running gag where whenever we were at cons together, he would always break into song, Am I Blue? And um, I'd pretend to be, you know, just horrified by the display, but secretly loving every second of it. And, you know, we just, it was just sweet. It was just, it was just dear. So, um, you know, the, those are the three that jump out. But if you gave me two more minutes, I'd, yeah. I'd have about five more because, you know, look at that writing team. Like you mentioned, JM, yeah. you know, Dwayne McDuffie, um, Rich Fogel, um, you know, it, it, they were the writers and directors were the creme de la creme. So, you know, we, we got to Paul Dini who wrote, yep. who, who wrote this little piggy. I mean, you know, you got to say these, these words of these magicians. So there, there, there's an endless, you know, group of 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 episodes I loved, but those are the ones that jump out in my head. Uh, and it's really like for for many, you are the definitive Wonder Woman as well. That that Wonder Woman is definitive, like, and I, I can see like nods of agreement as well from 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 the group here onto that because it's like for me, like the Linda Carter, like of course is always going to be like to me Wonder Woman, but that that wasn't the Wonder Woman I grew up with as well, you know. And then when you even look at it in terms of the more modern films and, and such like the body of work you leave in the character is the most extensive uh, when, when you when you look at it and the story arcs and even you mentioned there the relationship between Wonder Woman and Batman was probably the most defined within within that series and that inspired you know they kind of alluded to more within the the live action material later on then but you can see the, the genesis of it and yeah, of course, you can see some screen fans made screenshots from the film <laughs> and from the animated series i mean the fan art is just stunning and fabulous and yeah i think that that it was just alluded to though it, you know it never yep. it never and that's what i loved about it. it it wasn't this deep arc of romance um, it was the occasional flirtation, the sweetness, the I know you, you know me, you know, trying to, you know, penetrate that tough facade that Batman had, um, having his number a little bit and he knew it. I loved all, I loved playing every second of it and there wasn't much, but it was, it was just delightful playing that. And, um, you know, un, like, whereas with Shaira, and Green Lantern, that was a real love story. Like that was, had every beat in that love story, in that arc. Ours, you know, wasn't fully developed. Maybe if we, if the adventure had continued, yeah. maybe it would have been, but. Um, there was some back, I'd say it must be about 
maybe nearly 10 years or so, they did attempt comic book spin-offs and they had mm-hmm. a fun one with the Batman Beyond series where if you the Justice Lords and I yeah. think Diana ends up with the Justice Lord Batman. I think that's how they kind of tie it up. I, you know, again, as you said, with your with how canon works, you know, I need a map here and try and yeah. figure it out. But it was <laughs> fun that, you know, the show was like, a good art never talks down to an audience. It's there, it's a good story, and everyone can come to it then and go, oh, yeah, this, and they like, and then future generations can come in and add something like a tie-in novel or, uh, you know, a comic book, and it just, that's all because of the work you guys, you know, lay down in, in the original the original source material. And, uh, of course, in Sir Condolences as well, with the uh, the passing of, of Kevin as well, the, the whole chemistry of the whole Justice League were... Uh, like as an ensemble you guys were magnificent um, and at conventions I saw you was at the reunion in New York and you were just amazing on on, on on stage and Kevin was a real friend to the show as well he actually you know helped this show expand and he took a chance coming over here about eight years ago now or nine years ago on the 10th anniversary so um, you know again of course you know condolences and it was uh, the the team and hopefully you know um with the likes of phil lamar carl lumley and you know mike rosenberg many many others that you get the chance as well to you know come back as well we hope we get to see more from from the team uh, even if it's at conventions and such as well because the 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 fan base um always torn out when, when you guys do i know john Sutris from ward balloon i think you know john as well oh yes of course i do he, he he's fantastic for arranging the the live reads at conventions um you know i i i love how he just like he's <laughs> he's probably like the 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 coolest nerd i know you know he's like <laughs> he, with that radio background but then his wealth of knowledge with it and uh, he's been in such a, a great uh, spokesman and I always look forward to when you know if you're at a convention he's recording off you on the podcast those conversations have always been uh, amazing as well um, thank you so much for saying all of that for the condolences for all of that it's very sweet thank you yeah it's I think we got exceedingly lucky with our group you know in, we, we see each other um, we all got together after Kevin passed and um toasted him and it was you know so sweet and I think that's Andrea putting all of us together in a room and um you know when you talked about the the legacy of the show and I think that's the writers you know and I'd love to take credit for it um but I think that the writers were fans of the genre themselves they appreciated the genre and they respect the genre and so they, like you say, there was never a condescension with the fans. It was always respect. And I think the fans, that's why they're still there. That's why they're still, you know, watching the show. And when I meet people at cons, um, it's, it's, it's a father daughter, it's a mom and a son. And I'm meeting generations because like you said, for some of, for some of the fan base, their exposure, their introduction to these DC characters was through Justice League and Unlimited. So, um, you know, that's that's a beautiful thing to carry through, you know, to carry with us all, you know, we've all carried that with us, that we were part of somebody's childhood. You know, that's how lucky, how lucky we are. Amazing. Um, okay, I just want to throw it now. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I want to do Q&A. Okay, cool. Yeah. So if I, so if anyone has any questions, what I'll say is if you want to come up, uh, yeah, anyone has any questions, just come up a little bit closer then as well. Um, I would just before we began recording, I was saying about my friend Anto trying to battle. Yeah. To get Did up. he get up there? He, he managed to get up, but he's gone shy now. We, we see you, Anto, oh. you know, and all hiding there. <laughs> he's I, can't even, I can't see him, so he doesn't is have he, to be shy. You see, you see, he, she can't see the camera doesn't point that way, Anto. <laughs> You kill me later, he will. But we have we have this gentleman. Do you want to come around here and ask cool. anything? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to hand over. Go ahead. Oh, Susan, how are you? Hey, nice I'm to well. Meet you. Nice to uh, meet you. I just have a very quick question. Uh, I would like to know how was this transition between series TV to Unjustice game? <laughs> it's a great question. <laughs> um, it was a challenge. You know, I wasn't used to playing Wonder Woman. Well, games are very different than animation anyway. So you have that, you know, when we did Justice League, we were all together in a room. It was a huge room and 
just we would do rehearsals all together and um, all the guest stars would be there. So it was, you know, once you got over the shock of that you were sitting next to Mark Hamill or, you know, Alfred Molina, it was just, um, you, you relaxed a little bit. With video games, you're by yourself. You're not with a cast. So, and also she was such a different character than I was used to playing because I was used to playing nice, kind Diana, compassionate Diana. And then Injustice, not as much. Um, <laughs> so it was definitely a transition. I made them promise me that at some point in, in my career, they would give me a nice Diana that I got to play, the Injustice <laughs> people. Um, but, you know, anytime you get to uh, work, first of all, is a good thing. And anytime I get to voice her um, in any project, it, you know, I just see it as a gift. So there, there was some, um, you know, you had to, I had to make some adjustments, put it that way. But, um, you know, it was, it's all good. It, as far as I'm concerned, as an actor, it's all good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, cheers. Um, and do we have any other questions in the floor? Yeah, come on, yeah, just come around here. Um, yeah, just this way here, yeah, go ahead. Hey, Susan. Hi. Another Hello. fatty hat. Oh, yeah, so, very uh, handsome. Very bit, handsome. Uniform. Um, let's say I have first an observation and then a question. Sure. Um, colleague before me, we are actually working on the game together, developing. Uh, and um, since we strongly believe in power or equality, we said, like, we want a female character. All right. So there will be a male and a female. But we don't know much how we should animate, uh, let's say, uh, girls and women fighting so injustice <laughs> league uh, game was actually and still is a uh, quite a lot of references that we are looking at uh we will not brutally copy it but it's a, a definitely an inspiration to see how to move uh in, in the right way uh but my question actually is more with the voice acting you said that uh you had some guidelines how the voice should be uh princess and a warrior coming together at the same time when you were going for the audition did you have several like voices in in your arsenal of weapons let's say that you will use or you just went uh, with one i just went with one um i think my the the what i probably i don't remember this exactly but i what what i probably heard from andrea was to lower the pitch a little bit um so it was a little bit deeper in my register you know, Batman, meet me at the watchtower. So it was a little bit deeper, but in, in many scenes when I'm just talking, it was somewhat my speaking voice. I mean, it's it's not like you're hearing me today and you're like, wow, I don't even hear Wonder Woman. I mean, you can hear it there, but maybe there's a little bit more polish um, because of the princess quality, a little bit more formality. Um, and then the deeper register for the warrior piece. But no, I didn't go in with like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have mm. all these different, if they had told me, if they had directed me that way, then certainly I would have had to do it on the fly. Yikes, but mm. I, I didn't have to. I uh, Luckily enough, they found something in this voice, my speaking voice that they could mold into what they wanted. Cool, and one more, if you don't mind. Of course, um, that's what I'm here for. Do you remember maybe the situation or a moment when you said to yourself, yes, this is this is the voice I I'm going with, or is it like you were actually working or you were walking in the park, or uh, do you remember how that happened? I think it evolved, you okay. know, and I think it's not just the voice. I think that, um, I think it's the confidence, you know, that you develop over time. You know, when I first started, it was very intimidating walking into that room with all these big, you know, heavy hitters, especially somebody like Kevin, who had already done Batman, the animated series and, and Andrea and Bruce Tim, you know, you knew the, the legend before you walked into the room. So I think the voice was found over time. And I think, truthfully, I think that it was found as I built my confidence playing the character and feeling like, uh, you know, I was connecting to her. Eventually that happened, especially, especially when I had scenes with Hippolyta early on, because the mother daughter stuff really grounded me. Um, I'm a daughter, you know, um, mm -hmm. and I, I responded to those scenes so greatly. So I think those helped a lot um, rather than the tough, 
uh, superhero scenes, I think the more human scenes helped me find that voice. Excellent. And my, and my comfort level. Uh, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Great. Um, any, any other questions in the floor? I haven't gone all shy now because this is a oh. shy con. No, no open bar this con, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, that's the Irish. Unless there's a pint in our hands, we're not so chatty. <laughs> what about your friend? Go on, Anto, go on. Go on and say hi at least. He doesn't even need <laughs> Yeah, to he's going to do it. Go on, Anto. <laughs> oh, here he is. Get ready. Okay. <laughs> sorry, Sue. So sorry, you put me on the spot here. Hello. Oh. Uh, I think you kind of answered a few of the questions there already. You just uh, and to me, I think you are already a definitive, uh, definitive Wonder Woman there. Now, on all fairness, even listening to your voice, but uh, I was actually going to say, I think you kind of brushed on it there. Like you know, in in the TV show Wonder Woman, she basically was the boss to me. I knew she commanded the whole team. You know, it wasn't Batman or anything. She kind of stepped in and put them in line. I was just wondering, in real life, did you have that kind of atmosphere in the room? <laughs> did, you, did you take over all you know would you tell the guys what to do you know put them in their place or was there a very uh, back and forth with, with a drama there you know you know I think I was like we, what like I just referenced in the last question I was too nervous in the beginning yeah. you know to take any to take charge of anything I had never um I had been on animated shows before but never as a series regular never as one of the uh stars of the show and so I it took me a really long time not, you know, to stop pinching myself every time I walked into that room and saw all these people that were extraordinary. A lot of personalities, yeah. Oh my, and Michael Rosenbaum, you try getting a word in edgewise when he's in the room. I mean, he yeah. was flash, you know, he was flash and Carl was, you know, quiet off to the side like Jean and Phil was, you know, studying he studying comics on the floor with an open comic book you know he just that was his passion so no i i was not too bossy um <laughs> but you know it's it's a little hard to feel bossy when andrea romano and bruce tim are right there um you know you're just more like this you know like okay what tell me what to do and i'll do it yeah. um I, I think as I got more confident, maybe a little bit, you'd have to ask my my fellow Justice Leaguers what they we'll what they experienced. Get them all over. We'll, we'll do a, a cross-reference on that. We get them all over. We bring them all over here to us. Too. Oh, I think that would be a dream for all of us, truly. Okay, yep. I'll put you back to Owen because he put me okay. on the spot there. Well, <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Let the record show that if no one finds me again after this, Anto was responsible, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just just before we, we we start, I think we we have to stop bringing things to a close. We've gone over the the half uh, half hour mark, but just before, I just want to move on to like some of your other projects as well, like uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation, um, and they're announcing uh, season two. So I don't know if you can say, maybe you can't say anything if if you be if you be back or anything. Is that is that is that a no? Don't don't no. You no, know I haven't been told one way or the other. So okay. I think I'll err on the safe side and say you know stay tuned stay tuned, <laughs> stay tuned. Exactly. I think that's the safest answer um but that you know it's it's funny because I think Kevin I I met Kevin in, in a green room at a convention <laughs> and um he was there and everyone was you know just swarming around him and I I just thought oh should I introduce myself should I say hello and I I did eventually and I said my name and told him who I was and he's like hello, uh, you're Wonder Woman. I've seen every episode of the Justice League. I know who you are. And then shortly after that, I got a call, you know, to be in the show. So I'm not sure if if, if my um, bravery had anything to do with that or my brazen, my brazenness had anything to do with it. But, you know, it was it was a lovely connection because um, he was so familiar with with the show. So that, you know, that's always that's always a plus when the director knows your work. Uh, no, it, he does seem to be very sincere that if he's a fan of something, he seems to really connect and he just, he's like us, I'm a fan and it's a privilege then to walk with, you know, the people uh, he, he's, who's familiar, material he's familiar with. So yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, he's, uh, a, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's such a, I mean, of course, everyone says this one's wonderful, that one's wonderful. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he, he's like your biggest cheerleader. 
And I'm always nervous, always, always, always. I mean, it always gives me butterflies when I go to a session for the, you know, and he's just there, you know, looking at you, supporting you, he's got your back. Um, and he puts you, tries to put you at ease. And, you know, he's such a loyal guy. If, if, if he's in your corner, he's in your corner and you feel it. And um, it's been a joy working with him and playing that character, you know, that, you know, that, that was, again, that was such a gift playing the sorcerers. I loved it. Loved every, every word of it. Yeah. I was like, I, I knew He-Man the periphery in the show, yeah. but I think it was more, I have an older brother. I think He-Man was more uh, for, for him than it was for me. But then when the show came out, like it had me hooked because it was like to take <laughs> a concept and add to, add to the mythology. And we, my, my brother has a son who's turning four in April. And it's interesting because with a show, that's the, the gift to it was, again, going back to Just League, it didn't talk down. So it's something that like father and son can watch, you know, uh, parents and children. That's always wonderful. Um, and I think animation's kind of common ground. So you have like other shows like Simpsons and such as well. That's like generational and um that's you know it's we, we sometimes you know forget about the, you know the, the the simple pleasure of as a family or as a friend of sitting down and enjoying a show and um well, and and as a parent as a parent you want to be able to not get bored out of your head you know by the kids show right so the fact that the parents can enjoy it the kids can enjoy it um that it speaks to both the the generations that's again that's the writer's you know, doing what they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, listen, again, it's the, the writers bring the stories, but again, also the, the animators visualize, but the actors also, they give a soul to it all as well, you know? Um, and, you know, that's, again, you and your colleagues, definitely, it, it, it resonates with us. I think it's a, it's a mosaic, many, many parts for the same complete picture. Um, so I, I just, final call now. Okay, <laughs> to make sure no, no one coming up to me is upset after this. Anto, please, <laughs> please, it's okay. <laughs> but um, listen, thanks so much, everyone, for, for uh, coming along today and for asking such great questions. And thank you, Susan, as well, for coming along and uh, participating in this. We really do appreciate it. And uh, all I can say is we look, really look forward to hopefully seeing you over here in person in a future show. So thank you. My pleasure. It made me giddy when you reached out because, you know, <laughs> Dublin Comic Con is on my bucket list. Oh, so it, was, it, was, it made me very happy. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, talk soon. <laughs>